Alright, hey, welcome back. We're going to take a look today at six impellitary riffs you've got to know, including that one from 1987 that's burning. A couple things I want to get to first is that um, the tuning for these, uh, these riffs, the only one that's in standard tuning is this first one, burning. Everything else will be in E flat tuning, so tune to half step down. You'll see me using a different guitar, so that should tip you off. I think this riff was played in standard tuning. So Chris, if you're watching, you can confirm or deny. But uh, to me, it sounds like standard tuning and um, in, the, in the key of F sharp. So that's what we're going to go with on this one. Also, I want to point you to my free sweet picking guide, sweet picking boot camp. It's got video tab, guitar pro. It's going to help you with your arpeggios and sweet picking ideas. It's my free gift to you. So check that in the description below. All right, so let's get to it here. Um, we'll just start kicking off here with the riffs. I'm uh, a little history. I'm a big impellitary fan. I love, 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 especially, um, you know, those early albums really grabbed me from uh, the EP and Stand In Line and then coming along with the 90s albums uh, answer to the Master, Screaming Symphony, and I also love more recent stuff like Venom and The Nature of the Beast. And uh, I bought some of these early albums in Japan. This is Screaming Symphony and Answer to the Master. They were only available as imports. I think this is a more recent copy of this, but um, and then the newest one. What great artwork on this too, killer. Great album, check it out. Um, but one of the things about um, Chris's playing that I think has always been underrated is his riffs, his rhythm and songwriting. There's just so many, so many cool ideas and um, little nuances and details in his rhythm playing that you don't often hear. Um, some of the the metal stuff can get dumbed down a little bit to where it's just basic chunky um, power chords, but Chris never does that. He's always got some really interesting things in his rhythm playing. So that's why we're taking a look at the rhythm stuff today, the riffs. So let's start out with this one. This is Burning, like I said, from 1987, the EP. Um, this one I could not find any sort of footage of Chris playing this or anything, so I had to do it by ear. And the, uh, the album uh, was Admittedly, I think I've heard Chris say that the uh, the production wasn't the greatest, and so it's a little bit hard to hear, but I think I got it pretty good here. Again, Chris can confirm or deny if he ever watches this. But in the key of F sharp, we're going to be playing F sharp uh, natural minor scale here. So real quick, that's just 2, 4, 5 on the low E. 2, 4, 5 on the A. And two four on the um, on the D. All of the no single notes will come from that, and then we'll play some chords, uh, also along some power chords along with the riff. So let me um, just play the riff slow for you, and then we'll break it down. I'm not sure how slow that was, but we'll get to the notes. I've been used to playing this cranking uh, along with the original, so to me that felt slow. But uh, anyways, let's go through the notes. So I'm starting out on the low F sharp, second fret, low E string. Play that twice. Then we're going to play 4-2 on the A string, and then 5 on the low E. So that's going to kind of get us into our sort of the scale sequence type thing with the riff. Now I'm using a pull off here from four to two and then an upstroke on five on the low E and that's going to set me up for a downstroke for alternate picking the rest of this. That's why I'm doing it this way. Okay, now we're going to get into the sequence. That's the first little group. So it's two, four, five on the A, 
four on the D, five four on the A. And these notes are heavily muted. So if we put that together with the first part, we get this. Then we're going to play this. Two, four on the A. Five on the low E. Back to two on the A. Five, four on the low E. And if you put that together with the previous sequence, we get... Okay, and together with the first part, we have this. And once you get that down, you've got the main riff. Okay, then we just need to add the power chords. For the first time, the power chords are A power chord, B power chord at the second fret, C power chord at the third fret. Okay, so that would sound like this. Okay, and then the second time we're going to play a D. And if you get that A string in there, it'll sound fatter. And I think I heard that on the recording. So, and then an E power chord. So that would sound like. Oops. Okay, so then, and that's it. So let's put all that together slow. Okay, our next riff is Stand in Line from the 1988 record of the same title. You notice I've got a different guitar, so now we're tuned down a half step to E flat. Here's my low E just for reference. Okay, and the riff starts out like this. And, and probably one of the more simple riffs that Impelitari has done and for sure the easiest one on in this group of six riffs but um, but it's cool nonetheless so we start out on the low E string 3, 2 and then open and that gets us into the main riff now you'll notice you've got the A string going consistently here so and underneath that you've got some chord shapes largely inversions but what's going on here to start with we've got the A, A power chord now I'm playing a little accent here I think I hear it in there sometimes on the recording and that's just five and five on the high E in the B string. But then after that, I hear, I'm hearing that in there too. So that's five and five on the G and B and that leads us to the next chord. So hopefully that makes sense. It's the same notes as this. 10 and 9 on the on the D and G strings. But I think it makes more sense to play it there. 
chord is an F inversion where we have 7 on the D, 5 on the G, and 6 on the B string. Still going with that A string. And then move this up. Notice where the accents are. And then we're just going to move that up a whole step to 9, 7, and 8 on the D, G, and B strings. That's a G, an inversion of a G, G major. And then we're going to end up on D, so we're going to bar across 7, 7, and 7 on the D, G, and B strings. So all that together would sound like this. Stand in line, enjoy that one. Okay, a fantastic riff here. This is a great example of the detail and the cool little things going on in a lot of Chris's riffs. This is The Future is Black from Answer to the Master the record. And uh, we're in the key of E here. And we're starting out just with low E string. And then we're playing a B power chord, two and four on the A and D strings. So it's three open E's, and then three open E's, uh, and then the B chord, three open E's, and then the uh, B flat chord. And that B flat is just first fret on the A string, third fret on the D string. Now, when we hit this, we're going to go to an open A string. And then we play this cool little riff here. Okay, and so open A string goes to the third fret on the G string. I mean on the uh, low E string, sorry. So second fret on the A string, open G string, and then we end up on the first fret on the uh, A string. So that would sound like this. bit of a mute going. Okay, and then we're going to play. And this is um, really kind of dissonant, which makes it cool, is part of an E flat power chord. I'm just playing it here on the third fret G, fourth fret B. You could play it here. Here. Um, again, it's hard to find footage of this kind of stuff, so I'm not sure exactly where Chris played some of these things, but I think that's the correct chord there. 
E flat, and then um, so it's. Then we're gonna go to a B, a B note on the A string, second fret, and then the open E and B strings together. I play that with an upstroke. Okay, and that's the first part of the riff. Second time through, very similar. So now we're going to do this. So after this, pick harmonic on second fret A string, then open A string, first fret A string, second fret A string. So and then third fret on the low E string. So we get this. Okay? So here's what we have so far. Okay, and then the next two times it's the same as the first. So there's four times through the riff, and they're all the same except for that second one, okay? Now, after that, we go to this next part of the riff. So you're getting actually two riffs in one here, so we can count seven riffs maybe total, but we'll just consider this one, uh, one big killer riff here, okay? So after that, so let's play through all of that together. Just low E string, G power chord at the fifth and seventh fret D and G, D power chord fifth and seventh fret A and D, E power chord seventh and ninth fret A and D. Notice the low E string interspersed in there. We're going to play open E, and then the climb is 3, 4, 5 on the uh, low E string. And then the power chords are 5, 6, 5th fret, 6th fret, 7th fret, the D, D sharp, and E. So this should sound like this so far. Then the second part is... So it's not the same as the first. And then we get this a, uh, B flat, 6th fret and 8th fret on the low E and A string. A power chord at the 5th fret, G power chord at the 3rd fret. Okay? And just play through that twice. And so that's all the parts for The Future is Black.
okay, this Warrior from Answer to the Master. Great riff. It's also got a killer riff in the chorus section, with, which is worth checking out. But we're just going to take a look at the intro riff here. It's in the key of G. And it starts out like this. Whoops. So we play B flat at the first fret on the A string. Then F power chord, first fret low E, G at the third fret. Now the main riff comes in like this. So we're playing across the D and G strings, third fret, D and G strings, fifth fret, and then back to D and G on the third fret. So here's what we have so far. And notice that um, on the fifth fret, we're holding that a little longer. Okay, and then we're gonna shift quickly to the first fret and play low E first fret, and then we're gonna play the uh, first fret A and D strings after that. Then move that up a whole step and play third fret, low E, and play the third fret A and D strings right after that. Then low uh, third fret again, so. So it kind of climbs up. It's important to get that right to make this riff come out correctly timing wise. Okay, and then after this we're playing fifth fret across the A and D strings. And that's a G chord, so you could play that open as well. Chris might be doing that. But I'm not sure. Either way, this is going to sound pretty much the same. Or, it's probably a little easier to hit the open strings. Anyway, whichever way you choose to do it, after that you play third fret on the D and G strings, second fret on the D and G, and then open D and G. Whoops. Okay, so here's what we have so far. Start the riff over. So, we're just going up from th third fret to the fifth fret this time. Then we're playing E flat power chord. First fret on the D, third fret G, fourth fret B. And then we're skipping over to F on the uh, first fret low E and third fret A string. Then we start it over. And that's the main riff. Okay, so if I play that through a couple times, it would sound like this. to the master our third riff from answer to the master the album this is the title track obviously I love this album but there's just so many great riffs on here that I couldn't pass this one up this one is in the key of F sharp and it's pretty quick and uh, it reminds me a bit of lightning strikes again from Dokken so I don't know if Chris was influenced by this a little bit 
But, um, and there's a couple ways you could play this. Again, I don't have any footage really to go off of. But um, <clears throat> the, uh, the little chords here, across the, the G and B strings, that second fret, and then th um, second fret on the G and B, and then second fret G, third fret B, and then back to the second fret on G and B. You could also play that here. Sounds a little bit different, but it's the same note. And it requires a big stretch, so. You can do it that way. So Chris might be doing that. Uh, on the docking riff, uh, George Lynch is doing that sort of a thing, where he's climbing up with the pinky. But I don't know if Chris did it that way. It's certainly easier in some ways to play it here, although you do have to jump across all the way to the G and B strings instead of the D and G. So uh, as we go through the riff, you can try it both ways and see which works best for you. But the basic riff goes like this. That's the first part. F power chord. And then... So that's 2nd fret D and G, 4th fret D and G. And we're bouncing off of that low F sharp note. Okay, so and then we play that 2 across the G and B, 2 and 3, back to 2. So if we put all that together, we get this. The other way would be get that stretch in there. Up to you. Okay, now we're going to do the same riff again. Up to there. And once we get here, two F sharps, uh, single notes, and then that's a C sharp power chord to an A power chord. Fourth fret, um, A and D, um, open position, A power chord. Okay. Okay. So all together we get this. And we start again. Now this time the endings are different. We have some single notes here, so we're going to do this. So there's one dead note in there, or a muted note, right there. So right before you get into the single note. So keep that in mind rhythmically. So that's just two. So that the way that comes in is. Second fret on the low E, and then dead note. Or you could just mute the F sharp again. Just mute it heavily, and then the single notes come here. And that's three, two, open on the A. Four on the D, open E. Climbing back up, first fret, and then F sharp, and then we're back into the riff. Okay, so here's that part. Once again. And then the riff starts again. So if we play this, uh, play the, and then it repeats one more time after that. So if we play all this together in a loop um, twice, it'll sound like this at a slow tempo. Okay, and 
that's answer to the master. Okay, this is Kingdom of Light. This is from the Screaming Symphony record, which is also one of my favorites. Um, great album from top to bottom. And uh, I would do more riffs on this one if we do another uh, Impelitary Riffs video. But for now, we're going to stay with this one, Kingdom of Light. This is in the key of E. Very cool. Again, down to the details and the little nuance that's going on here, which makes this riff so cool. So we start out like this on the low E string. And then we're going to play the, kind of this partial G chord. Now I'm not sure if Chris is playing this here or here. Whoops. Or there, like a G power chord there at the fifth fret. But uh, it kind of is co cool to stay in position here. And basically play the top two strings on the third fret along with the open G string. And then I'm playing an E power chord at the second fret. Two, two four on the D and G and then five on the B string. Okay, now we're gonna move to the C chord. Back to a B chord. So this is cool though. It's uh, third fret on the A string and then fourth fret on the B string. So it's kind of like a C major seven, but I doubt Chris is thinking of it that way. So it's got a little bit of dissonance to it, which makes it sound cool. It's kind of got that tension and then it resolves to the B chord. So. And I'm just kind of playing that third string on the third fret on the A string as well while I'm playing this. And that's just fourth fret across the G and B. Okay, so the first part is. Second part. Time we're just going to play C power chord up to a D power chord. Third time, same as the first. Last time. And we have the single note thing, so. fret on the A string, 3-2 open on the A string, then 3-2 on the low E, Oops. climb up 2-3-5 on the low E and then 2nd fret A string. You hear this all over Chris's rhythm playing where he's Kind of got these little um, descending and then ascending single note riffs in between the power chords, which is a lot of fun to play in this style. So here's that last part again. And that's the first part of the riff. So let me go through that again. Okay, and then the riff 
that comes after that, which I played for you, is... Twice on that, so it's um, low E string, and then B power chord to B flat power chord. And then, that's a G, uh, open G power chord without first finger here. Like that, so. Got the low E in between those two chords. So G to an E again, and then this time we go. So after this, E, F sharp, G, and that's it. You just play that twice. Then you're into the verse. And that is Kingdom of Light, great riff from Screaming Symphony. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this look at um, six impellitary riffs you got to know. It's a lot to get through here. Lots of great stuff. Lots of other riffs I could have taken a look at, including some of the more recent ones. But this should keep you busy for a while. And hopefully um, you impellitary fans out there, uh, we'll dig this and some of the new folks out there who don't know about Chris and Pelletieri and his band will check them out. Great vocalist Rob Rock um, also has worked with Graham Bonnet on a couple of the Pelletieri records, but great stuff overall. So I uh, hope you uh, dig this. Check out that free sweet picking guy down below. Please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. For more content like this and I will see you next time. Rock on!